Hello guys, I am back from another video and today we talk about what if Deku was an Oni. So, in the last video we talked about how during the sports festival, Izuku was being praised but for Bakugo he was being dumped on. Mostly because of the whole speech thing where he said that he's going to be the winner of the sports festival and he's going to become number one. And also nearly killing Izuku, even though he has an amazing uh, regeneration ability but still Everybody was pissed off at Bakko. Um, most of the um, sports festival was pretty much normal, except for his, you know, cavalry team consisting of of Ibarra, Kiniko, and the other guy. I can't remember his name. So, yeah. And for the other events, they were pretty much normal. But um, unfortunately, um, Mr. Todoroki over there didn't decide to like, you know, decide to um, forfeit the match. And during the the semifinals, the villain like the villains basically arrived as some of them would start attacking the students as one of the nomus would basically um knock out Izuku. But thankfully Izuku came back. But his horns, or more specifically two of his horns, would fuse together, creating two just two large horns. His face obscured in shadow, his eyes becoming purplish, as he would scream out that he's gonna kill those villains, and as for the heroes, the heroes were confused seeing him in this state, and as for his two, you know, ships, aka um, Kiniko and Ibarra, seeing this, they don't know how to feel about it. And we ended off that episode with that point. So yeah, so let's talk about what happens next. So, Izuku would give off this almost sadistic-like smile, almost similar to Sukuna from Jujutsu Kaisen. Everybody would see that his eyes are completely glowing purple, his sword becoming larger, his kanabo almost fusing with his arm, as he would say this, I will kill you, you damn villains! As he would start charging forward towards one of the villains, specifically the Nomu, and crushes his, you know, brain, killing them in an instant. One of the villains, specifically Shigaraki, would say this. You, you cheater! How did you? And I thought that Noma was... As he would look at him, as he would say this. You're next. Basically, um, putting up his finger, pointing him right at him. As he would start charging in towards him. So, Konigiri would basically use his, you know, quirk to basically try and teleport him away. But Izuku would basically stumble into, um, um, let's just say into the, um, stands or whatever, or more specifically the, um, the seats where the audience was meant to, like, watch this, which was the U.S. Bus Festival, or the Sports Festival, or whatever. But Izuku would slam into one of the, you know, into one of the stone chairs there, or seats or whatever, as he would get up, as he would say this. Why, you little... As his arm would start transforming into kind of like a katabo, but it's literally fused with his arm, and instead of like, you know, metal spikes, it's literally made from his bones. More specifically, the same material that's basically, you know, basically like his horns, but except it's glowing blue. As he would start charging in at them once again, as he would start, you know, start bashing onto Shigaraki, Shigaraki's face was basically being beaten to a bloody pulp. And as for, you know, um, Konagiri, he would start, um, start to use his quirk, but one of the heroes would basically try and attack him to stop him from, you know, teleporting Shigaraki away. The villains are being beaten to the ground, and, uh, sorry about the background, um, the background noises, it's currently raining because, you know, rainy season here, and I'm just hoping there's no typhoon today because I swear to god, uh... I just hope there's no typhoon. So yeah, let's go back to the story. So during the whole like of being, you know, the League of Villains basically attacking, one of them specifically, you know, um Izuku's, you know, um um admirers, specifically Kiniko, is seeing Izuku in this state. As she would say this. Hey, um um as she would start looking at wait for a second. Start looking at Ibarra as Ibarra would say this. What is it, Kaneko? 
Ash would say this. Um, Ibarra, we should stop this. Izuki's becoming more like a monster. And remember, he he is the only, the only of this of that Buddhist sect. And not only that, he literally caused tragedies. And if he were to transform back into that monster state, he he, as she would say, this. Don't worry, I got this. Ibarra would start charging in, knowing that if she does save Izuku, she would be, you know, recognized and. Yeah, she would start fantasizing. Just imagine, like, you know, Sakura from, like, um, Naruto basically fantasizing her with, you know, Sasuke. So, she would basically jump in as she would basically, um, basically, like, uh, hold up her hands and basically point it at Izuku, causing her hair to basically spring out into action, basically wrapping around Izuku. Izuku would start trying to get out of this, um, you know, um, you know, in this state, as you'd start screaming out, Who the hell? Who captured me? As you'd start um, shouting at them, or more specifically, at the person being, being Ibarra. Ibarra would start telling Izuku to please calm down, and it's her, Ibarra. Izuku would not remember, only remembering that he's an Oni and starts trying to buy at her. But she couldn't just ignore it. So, she would start coming closer to Izuku as um, the fighting around them would basically, it's basically like, um, kind of like a slow-mo type thing. As she would start going closer and closer to Izuku as she would say this, Izuku, it's me Ibarra, your friend. Izuku would not care, saying, who the hell, I don't have any friends, I'm just a monster, a mon- as Ibarra would basically hold up her, like, uh, bring her hand into his, like, uh, brings her hand and puts it up to his cheek and basically pushes her, like, pushes her, like, face to Izuku as she would give Izuku a kiss. So, during the fighting, well, um, some of the heroes are basically winning, as for the villains, they're being defeated left and right. Shigaraki would tell everybody to start escape or at least start to escape, as the villains would start going into Shigara- not Shigaraki, I meant um, Konigiri's portals, and as for Shigaraki himself, he would go in basically battered and bruised, more specifically in the face, and he has two black eyes. Shigaraki would start eyeing Izuku Midoriya with this glare of anger and rage, as when he does teleport back into, you know, into the League of Villains lounge, the heroes would see that they basically won, but seeing Izuku basically, you know, after like um, the whole battle, they would see that, you know, Ibarra basically kissed Izuku. Izuku would start turning back, his horns splitting apart, turning back into four horns. His eye would basically turn back to his, you know, um, strange bluish, like his strange bluish color, as his body would basically calm down. His Kanobo would basically drop to the ground, basically um, stop being fused with his arm. And as for his, you know, sword, well, his sword would basically just like drop to the ground as well. As he would basically um, um, just get knocked out into the arms, or in this case, the body of Ibarra. As she would say this, don't worry, Izuku, I'm here. She would give off this almost yandere vibe, as everybody would say to themselves, Is she a yandere or something? <laughs> so, as one of the people there, specifically, you know, Recovery Girl arrives, she would see that Izuku is basically healing up from her, like, healing up from his injuries, as she would say this. So, is the boy okay? As she would say this. Yeah, don't worry. Besides, my love and God's love is gonna help him. She would basically carry Izuku away with her hair as she would um, also bring his Konobo and also his sword. And as for Kiriko, Kiriko is a bit jealous but just ignores it to, you know, check out Izuku if he's okay. So, after this little incident, apparently the media caught on as they think Izuku is pretty much a hero even though that little outburst of like, you know, dark energy aka him turning into his more um, berserker-like state, or which I'm calling his Oni state, which 
everybody just ignored, thinking that he's just a hero, and just went out of his way to protect everybody. So, yeah, the incident was told that, you know, every single student was told that they're not allowed to go to UA until like a few weeks. So, yeah, as everybody is basically like going back home, Izuku was told to stay in his room for now, as he was told to rest, because after that little incident, he felt a bit numb. What do I mean by this? Well, his entire nervous system, or more specifically, his like, um, you know, body, feels like he can't move. Every time when he does move, it feels like it's, well, on fire, like his body's completely in fire. So, he has to stay in this room for now, and as for, and as for the days that go by, well, this happens. Sorry about the noise, it's still raining outside and it's super annoying, but either way, we go to a different perspective, in this case, the perspective of UA, or more specifically, Principal Nezu. Principal Nezu would basically explain to everybody that they're planning on making dorms for all the students to make sure that if another attack happens, they will be ready to save all the, you know, uh, aspiring heroes in case of the villains basically arriving once again. One of them would say this, being Cementos, or at least I think that's his name. I don't really remember Cementos all that well, but um, I don't really remember his personality, but just I'm just gonna make it my own. So Cementos would say this. Hmm, that would actually make sense. After all, these children are quite weak. I mean, some of them are pretty much special, especially with that Bakugou kid, but with his temper, it won't be pretty. Especially with that Izuku kid. After all, he doesn't really have a quirk, and he's... he's that. As one of them would say this, being, you know, um, All Might, he would say this. Yes, I know, he's the only, but he seemed to have good intentions. Not only that, he lost his memories of being the only. So basically, he's just a normal kid. But after the, you know, after the little incident in the US, not the USG, I meant the um, sports festival, I think he's regaining his memories back. And in case that happens, we need to stop him. As one of them would say this, being, you know, Aizawa, as Aizawa would say this, don't worry. Besides, if that happens, I'll discipline my student. And as for, you know, Principal Nezu, Principal Nezu would say this. Good. And as for that, I want all of you to maybe tell your students, and including their parents, to maybe sign a waiver as you would basically bring out some papers, basically um, proclaiming about the whole, like, um, dorms thing, as you would say this. So they can join the UA dorms in case of another villain attack. Especially it comes to the parents. After all, their parents are probably either weak with their quirks, or don't know how to use them well. So, after that, they start going their separate ways, as Aizawa would start explaining to these, um, you know, to the students, um, parents, especially Izuku's, aka, you know, Kiniko's, um, parents, about the dorms. They would hesitate a little bit because, you know, that's their children, but they decide to do it because, you know, in case of their safety and also for their safety. And so, because of this, well, they would be told that they're going to be staying at the UA dorms. So, everybody is basically packing up all of their things, including Izuku himself, basically packing up all of his things as they started leaving to go to the dorms. Wait for a second. So, as he basically just like, um, starts, you know, packing all of his things to go to the dorms, um, Kiriko would say this, Hey, um, Izuku, as Izuku would say this, What is it, Kiriko? As she would say this, Well, I need some help with this stuff over here. As Izuku goes into his, like, goes into her room, as he would see that there's several, like, um, you know, clothes basically strewn around, like, like, basically, like, strewn around, like, her room. It's basically like a river of clothes at this point. As Izuku would say this, what the hell happened here? As she would say this, well, I was trying to get all my clothes out of the closet and, um, 
It kind of it kind of exploded just like Bakugo's explosions. Wait for a second. Sorry about that. She would say that as easy could say this. Well, um, guess what should I do then? As she would say this. Oh, you're gonna help me. As you would say this. Are you serious? As she would say this. Yep, because you are my, well, brother. And remember, we are siblings. As he would say this. Ugh, even though I finished mine and was, and I'm completely tired right now. As she would say this. But I'm your little sister. Not technically. I mean, you're technically like a few... Um, actually, how old are you exactly now? As you would say this. I'm 15. I can't remember my birthday, so... As she would say this. Mm, I guess you can say that I'm kind of older than you. As you would say this. Ugh, whatever. As one of them would say this, being Kimiko. So, let's do this. So, as Izuku basically helps her with her, you know, packing, he would accidentally, you know, um, found her... underwear. Oh boy. Let me give you some details, to say the least. <laughs> uh, it's pink underwear with, like, several, like, polka dots with, um, sparkles on them. As when Kiriko sees them, she would basically grab them as she would say this. You, 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 as Izuku would say this. No, I didn't mean it like that. That's, she would basically slap Izuku right in the face. As Izuku would basically have a red mark on his face, as she would say this. Pervert. As he would say this. It was an accident. I swear. Ow, that absolutely hurt. As he would start regenerating, as he would say this. Ow, it still hurts. So, after basically packing all of her things, she would say this. So, Izuku. As Izuku would say this. Um, yeah, Kiniko? As she would say this. So, we're finally leaving our... Basically living our parents' house now. As you would say this. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you could say that it's a... Another step of becoming a number one hero. Or, in your case, probably like a regular old hero. As she would say this. <laughs> I guess you're right. So... After she, um, tells Izuku to leave her room, he would basically go to sleep, and also, you know, Kiriko. The next day comes as the moving trucks basically arrived to bring all of their stuff. So, after they gone into the moving truck, they started moving to UA, or more specifically, to their dorms. So, when they arrived there, they see several other moving trucks, most prominently, a big-ass one, which... Which, well, the driver basically literally brings out the red carpet as somebody comes out of there, which is Momo. <sighs> as Izuku would sigh to himself, thinking in his mind, well, she is a rich girl, so... So, as both of them would basically get out of their, you know, um, um, the moving truck, they would start getting all of their stuff as they started going into their specific dorm rooms. So... Izuku would start going into the, um, boy side of the, you know, dorms, as he would start putting all of his things in a certain room. Uh, putting up some posters, and also his stuff, including his closet and his gigantic-ass bed. His posters mostly, um, have, like, bands, mostly heavy metal bands, and also some jazz ones for some reason. Izuku has a bit of a weird taste in music. So... As Izuku basically finishes, you know, finishing off everything, he would be told by one of his classmates, specifically Kirishima, that they're planning on going to the, um, living quarters to maybe have, like, you know, a bit of fun. He doesn't see Izuku's room, as Izuku would say this, Alright, I'm getting out. So, after he gets out of his room, he would lock the door as everybody is basically in the living quarters. Except for Bakugo for some reason. As one of them would say this, being Momo, well, apparently Bakugo didn't want to join. And apparently his mother decided for him to not join the UA dorms because, and I quote, as she would grab a paper saying, 
I don't want my stupid son to cause any trouble in your lovely school. And uh, apparently, she basically slapped him right in the head for some odd reason. As Izuku would start laughing in the inside. So, after that, they would basically have that whole like discussion about all of their rooms. As everybody is basically like looking at all of their rooms, we'll see Ibarra's, which is filled like filled with like memorabilia about like Jesus Christ, literally and figuratively. And not only that, there's several Bibles on her like desk, and also some religious items, mostly like crosses, um, um, crucifixes, and many other things like that, including holy water under her bed for some reason. And they started reaching towards Izuku's room, which Izuku doesn't really care as they see that he's filled, like, his room is basically like a typical, like, um, boy's room. Just a regular old, like, desk for writing and also, um, I guess, I guess you could say, like, um, wait for a sec, doing homework and seeing, uh, in some of the, you know, walls, there's, like, posters that are filled with, you know, um, some of his favorite bands. as. Jira would say this. You have weird music taste. I mean, you like um, you like heavy metal, but also jazz. As she would start looking at Izuku, as Izuku would say this. What? As she would say this. Never mind. As one of them would say this, being you know, um, <laughs> being Ibarra. As she would start um, spraying holy water all over the place. As everybody would start looking at her. As she would say this. To keep away all of the demons of this place, including Sin. Especially from you, Mineta. As she would basically glare at him, as she, well, starts getting scared. As one of them would say this, being, well, Hugakure, she would say this. So everybody, what should we do now? As Izuku would say this. Ugh, I'm planning on getting some sleep. So, see ya. As everybody would start leaving his room, as Izuku would basically go onto his bed, putting up his blanket, as he would fall asleep. And as for the other students, they would also fall asleep. Except for, you know, Ibarra, which she is currently planning on going to his room to maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe like sleep with him, but not in that way. So, yeah. Unfortunately, this is going to be the end of this episode, but before you leave, I want all of you guys to pick a hero name for, you know, Izuku. Because I don't really have any ideas for his hero name. So yeah, just go into the comments and basically say your, um, or at least talk about Izuku's hero name, and I will basically just like, um, um, shout it out on, you know, the next video or something like that. So yeah, just go into the comments. Make a hero name for this what if um, Izuku or um, whatever about his hero name. So yeah, so this is going to be the end of this episode. And so I hope you liked the video, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye